Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixel, and in today's video, we are going to be going over the touched function, which is a function which you can place in parts, blocks, or whatever, and it just fires whenever um, something touches this block. Uh, most likely, when you use this function, you're going to be de detecting a character, uh, a player, basically, um, touching the part, but it can fire if anything is touching the block so that's why we'll I'll go into depth more about that so what we're gonna start off with is we're gonna create a block I mean you can make it how big you want just gonna name it lava and then we're gonna make the brick color red if it's any other color um, this is kind of a game design standpoint where it's it's a good idea to make it red because it's easier to identify as lava Usually a player will not want to touch something red. If you have like a dark theme or any other theme and then you throw in some red, it's clear that this is something you're not supposed to touch. Also, another tip for uh, a physics standpoint, uh, make sure that it's can collide false. What this does, uh, let me actually show you. If can collide is on, which means that you can collide with this object, there is a glitch. Well, actually, we haven't scripted anything yet, but there's a glitch where you can just constantly jump over the lava and it will not kill you. But once you walk over or actually touch it or something, it won't do that. But if the can collide is false, you're going to go through this object, and by the time you get a chance to jump, you will already be in full contact with the block. So it's just better to have a can't collide false, so that glitch does not happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert a script. Since we're working on the server, we're going to insert a script. Uh, you don't have to name it anything, but this is what we're going to do. So... We went over the two types of functions that you can do in the last video. The function like this, like function hello, uh, you put your code in there, and then to fire it, you go like that, or you can connect it up to something like, um, like the touched function, like this. This is just an example. Alright, so basically to fire the touched function, this is one way to do it, is you just do, you, you get the part, well, we have a lava part, so we're going to do script.parent, since the script is a child of lava, so the script.parent, we're going to detect touched. So you just put dot touched, the colons, connect, and then you put your function inside of here. Um, the reason some people do this method, um, you can do it like this, well, with, well, without this, this is kind of like the old method that most people would do, um, but now people kind of put it together into one thing. So you do, you know, connect, but then you put function like this and then end. So then this will just run like this. Um, the reason some people might use this is because they have a function that they want to have but they don't want to run it like for a specific thing they run it they want to run it manually so you would type something like this i know we already went over functions but that's just a little refresher so so like i said uh, the touch the, the dot touch touch function goes like this um you just do dot touch you know that's kind of what the function is so um, I prefer the more advanced method, specifically in this case because we're not manually calling it, uh, technically. Um, so we're just going to do script.parent.touched connect function. Um, and there's this new update that like automatically puts like a parenthesis or uh, like a dialogue mark or speech mark, um, which I really don't like. I don't know how to turn it off, but just delete the, the little thing here and press enter and it'll be fine um but in here for our parameter is that what it's called i can't remember you know there's arguments in parameters i went over that as well we're just going to make um the parameter be hit so let me actually show you all right so if you guys ever go to the wiki and you look at a page like this um then you can see we have touched um, and then it goes over everything. So if you guys need a, you know, a quick jogger, I didn't like using the wiki because it was so confusing and they weren't really videos um, explaining it. Maybe I'll make a specific video to this, but uh, yes, it is called parameters. So it shows you the parameters and the name of this parameter, which we named hit is the other part, which let's see what it says. It's an instance. So that means that it has to specifically be, um, 
that is specifically something and not just the name of something. So the description is the other part that came in contact with the given part. And in this case, hit could be the player's torso, their leg, or something like that. And then it gives an example like that. So that is um, how you can use the wiki. Um, in this case, we're going to use hit to identify if it is a character. And to do that, we're going to see if the humanoid is a property, or not a property, a child of uh, the character or what's hitting it. Um, and to do that, we'll do hit.parent. And the reason we do parent is because the hit is not the actual model of the character, it's one of their body parts. So like their leg or their arm or something. So we'll just do hit.parent, which we're now inside of the player or the character. And then we're gonna do find first child humanoid. And, and what the if does is if, it's basically saying if the humanoid exists, then we'll, you know, take away um, health from the humanoid. Because if we try to do that without the hum we're detecting if a humanoid exists, then we'll get an error, which we do not want. So to, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to do, you can make a variable if you want. Hit that parent dot humanoid. So we're going to do hum, which is our humanoid dot health which is a property of the humanoid and we're going to set it to zero which is just going to kill the player um so if we go into test here which if you go to the test tab there is a test button uh we walk over it and we die but something i wanted to show you also to probably include is a debounce which i'll make a specific video on debounce probably in the next episode but basically debounce um it doesn't have to be named debounce i didn't know that either for like a while when i was learning but it does not have to be called debounce uh, people just name it debounce so it's clear that what that is doing is the debounce so um highlight over these two lines and hit shift tab no actually not just hit tab i lied um just hit tab twice so it's like there's a space between like here and then you're going to do shift enter or just enter it doesn't matter and now we're going to do another if statement so if debounce is false and we do two equal signs because you know you can replace some of these with greater than or less than or the the tilde is that what it's called the little squiggly thing to basically means if it's not false um we'll get into that in another video as well but we're going to move this end down here like that so then um, we're gonna, oops, caps is on. We're gonna set debounce to be true. Um, and what the whole point of this is, is you're probably gonna understand right now. We're gonna put a wait, uh, wait one, and then set it back to false. So what this is doing, if we did not have a debounce, every time you would touch this part and you were a player, it would kill you. In this case, we kind of want that. Um, I'm just throwing this in there so you guys understand. There's a whole bunch of most scripts you do need this for a function because you don't want it to run a whole bunch of times. Say if you have a like some like you're touching a part to open up UI or open up a shop or teleport a player. Teleporting a player is very important. You would put a debounce because what it does, debounce, which is a variable inside of our script, clearly, um, if it's false, then we're gonna set it to true and then we're gonna do this. And since we had the weight in here. Um, it's going to take a second before it goes back to false. So if you fire this script or, or this function again, debounce is going to be true. So it will not continue firing. But scripts run really quickly, so that's why we throw in this wait. Um, so like, yeah. You won't really see a difference, but when we hit it... <coughs> yeah. See, if, if we put like a print in there and put print player killed and we didn't have the debounce, it would be like player killed, killed, killed. Like it would like spam it out. So, so I guess that is the end of this video. Um, I know this video was quite on the shorter side, but you know, um, it's just that, but you know, there is the other way to do it. But like I said in the beginning, um, you know, you could name it touched. Um, and then again, you put hit in the parameters again. And then you can literally copy this, like, like it's exactly the same. And then just do script parent dot touched connect touch. And then you put it like that. And then if we delete that, 
this should work so we're making a function and then we're just firing it every time something Ooh. touches it so that is also the other way to do it um but that is it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed uh, if you guys were Follow me on Twitter. I know I said I was working on a very important video that I think is going to be very helpful. I'm still working on it. You know, not really going to give more information on it, but you know it's going to be out. This video is definitely going up before that video because just because I need to get a video out, like I haven't done it in like a really long time. Um, well, this is me signing off, and as always, keep on scripting.